In this problem, we're told a projectile is launched at a ground level with an initial speed of 50 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. It strikes a target above the ground three seconds later. What are the X and Y distances from where the projectile was launched to where it lands? So what do we know about this problem? So we know that this projectile is going to be launched at 30 degrees and at 50 meters per second. And we know it's going to travel in the air for three seconds, right? And it's going to land, right? It's going to land something like this. So it's going to land at some height, right? And it's going to land some distance away. And so what we're trying to do is find those two distances. And we're going to say delta x is the change in how far it goes in the x. And then delta y is going to be how high it, right? So how high it lands, basically. And so what we want to do, right, when solving two dimensional kinematic problems like this is to draw the given in the x direction and in the y direction. So you want to say the given in the x and the y. So usually for past ones, uh, you've done one dimensional where you just have to focus on one. But you, what you want to do in these is to draw, or not draw, write out the variables that you know in the x and y direction. So what do we know? So we always know in the y direction that acceleration is going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Right? This is gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, but it's downward, so it's negative. And that's in the y direction. In the x direction, unless specified differently, the acceleration is 0 meters per second squared because there's no acceleration in uh, the x direction. What else do we know? We know the time for both of them is going to be 3 seconds. The time it takes for it to end, right, to get to the end of the, uh, end of the interval is going to be 3 seconds. And then what we also know is the initial velocity in the x and y. So they don't tell us uh, explicitly, but they give us information to find both of these values because they give us, right, they give us the vector, right? They give us the direction and the magnitude. So what you want to do to find the x and y is draw a triangle like this, right? This is 30 degrees, and then this is 50. And so what we want to do is find the x, which is basically this side of the triangle, and then the y, which, uh, which is this side of the triangle. And so what you want to do is just use trig. So for finding the x, you use cosine. So the cosine of an angle, 30 degrees, uh, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is x over 50. So multiply both sides by that. And basically you get x, which is your x velocity, is 50 times the cosine of 30. So basically what you do is just take your magnitude and then multiply by the cosine of whatever the angle it's fired at is. For the y, you're going to use sine. So sine of the angle, which is 30, is equal to sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse, y over 50. Multiplying both sides by 50, you get the y, right? And the y is going to be the y velocity or initial velocity. So 50 times the sine of 30. What you do for x, like the x component is just your magnitude times the cosine of an angle, and then for y is just your magnitude times the sine of the angle. So what you should notice now is that we have the acceleration, we have the time, and the initial velocity for both. And what we want to find for each of them is the change in the x, and then this one's the change in the y. And so what we're going to do is just solve these independently using the kinematic equations. So the kinematic equation we're going to use is the third one right here, which is delta uh, x or y is equal to v sub 0 times t plus 1 half at squared but we're just going to use the variables for the specific one. So let's just actually just start with the y for this one. So we're going to do delta y equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half at squared. The reason we're using this one is because we know the initial velocity in the y, we know the time, and we know the acceleration. So all we got to do is just plug it in. So the initial velocity in the y is 50 times the sine of 30. Multiply that by t, which is 3, plus 1 half times the acceleration, which is minus 9.8, uh, times t squared. So t is 3, so 3 squared. So what you want to do is plug this in. So 50 times the sine of 30. Make sure you're in degrees when you do this. Uh, times 3 plus 1 half times uh, minus 9.8 times uh, t squared, right? which is just 3 squared. And when you do this, what you're going to get is that delta y, or the change in the y, is 30.9 meters. So uh, the distances, right, x and y, where the projectile was fired to where it lands, it's going to be 30.9 meters above. So your answer to, uh, for the y, right, the y distance is going to be 30.9 meters. So this is the y. Now let's do the x. So you're going to do the same exact thing for you did here, but just plug in the x values. So it's going to be delta x equals v sub 0 x, which is 50 times the cosine of 30. Right, multiply that by uh, t, which is still 3 seconds plus 1 half times a, but notice a is 0. So it's just going to be 0 times t. It doesn't make a difference. It's still 0. So in reality, it's just the initial velocity multiplied by time. So you want to do 50 times the cosine of 30 times uh, 3. And when you do that, you're going to get 129. So delta x is equal to 129.9.
So 129.9, and then it's going to be meters because this is a distance. So 129.9 meters, that's going to be uh, how far x, right? So how far it went in the x. So this is in the x, this is in the y. But yeah, so these are going to be your answers, and hopefully you found this useful.